So hi everyone, I'm going to give you a technical update on ADA, Spark, Libelang, and Visual Studio Code. Uh, note that these are the only technologies around ADA uh, that we develop that have seen interesting developments this year, but we thought that these are the most interesting for you and your students. So first, let's talk about ADA. Uh, you probably know that uh, there's a brand new version of ADA called uh, ADA 2022, or at least it will be called this way once uh, the ISO gives its formal uh, stamp of approval. And so today with the GNAT uh, FSF 11 that will be activated with the GNAT X uh, switch and tomorrow with the FSF 12, which will be activated with GNAT 2022. So it's a dedicated switch for this uh, ADA version instead of uh, piggybacking on the extension uh, switch for GNAT. And so what we have in this new uh, ADA version uh, it's not as encompassing, as big as uh, the uh, uh, changes that uh, we saw in ADA 2012 with all the contract uh, language, uh, but there's there's already a lot. Uh, there are uh, changes to the concurrency profiles. So there's a new profile called Jorvik, which is a relaxation of the Raven score profile. So the profile in ADA is a way to restrict the language, and here that's related to concurrency. And so, for example, the example that Tulio showed before. Uh, would not have been allowed in uh, in, in Raven's car because it, it was using some guards for the entries that were not what we call uh, simple barriers, but that that were uh, pure barriers. So that that will be allowed in Jorvik, not in Raven's car. And so you can uh, look at this uh, blog post that uh, a colleague of us, uh, Pat Rogers, wrote to that explains the differences between the two. Uh, so for example, uh, Jorvik allows to have multiple uh, entries per product direct contrary to Raven's car. Uh, Jorvik allows uh, queues to have more than one element on an entry contrary to Raven's car. So things that uh, allow uh, the example, or at least some of the examples that Tulio showed that would not be uh, allowed in Raven's car. And uh, now uh, going outside of the concurrency, there are many things that facilitate the use of the language and that make it easier to uh, express things simply. So uh, maybe, approach the uh, uh, beautiful, I don't know how we call it, <laughs> uh, the, the be be beauty of the program that you mentioned. So uh, now you can use bracket syntax in aggregates when the, you have homogeneous aggregates, so for arrays, vectors, and sets uh, of the standard containers. Uh, you can use a tick image, so this attribute to display uh, an image of a value for all types, which is generated automatically, and you can interact with that so, to provide your own for certain types. Uh, the standard library provides uh, uh, big integers, so integers that are unbounded, uh, and big reals, uh, so called this way, but they are really rationals. Uh, so I will see an example of that, that can be quite useful in particular for specifying numerical uh, APIs. Uh, related to that, and not only, you can have your own user-defined literals for a type, uh, so you can have literals of integer, of float, of string, and uh, automatically uh, uh, have the, the creation uh, from this literal to, to the type of your choice. Uh, related to uh, contracts and, and either dynamic checking of contracts or proof, uh, now we have contracts on access to subprogram types. So uh, here you can have callbacks with their own precondition, post conditions, and uh, this will be also uh, allowed in Spark and will allow you to do proof that involve the programs using uh, such uh, callbacks. Uh, and finally, for contracts, there are a number of extensions uh, of expression that uh, help write um, more synthetically uh, rich contracts. Uh, so in particular, declare expressions to uh, introduce uh, names for shared parts in, uh, in an expression. Uh, delta aggregates, so which is a, a, a rephrasing and an update on what we called previously the update attribute, which was just a GNAT extension for Spark. Uh, and iterated component association, which we'll see in a moment, which is a way to create an, an aggregate where elements depend, uh, the value of elements depend uh, on the index value. And so if you want to know a bit more about that, there's also a blog post uh, written uh, by, uh, by our colleague Arlo Charlet. So here is an example which uses some of these extensions. Uh, so you can see that at the top, I'm within the, this unit big integers. Uh, then uh, a few lines below, I'm declaring this uh, type R as an array of big integer. 
So we can do that. Uh, and then uh, see that I can declare an array A of this type R with this bracket syntax uh, because it's an homogeneous uh, collection. And we just uh, integral, uh, integral literals here, one, two, three, uh, because here this integral literal will be interpreted as a big integer thanks to the user defined uh, uh, literal feature of ADA, which is implemented for this big integer library. Which you, can, you could do the same for your own. Uh, the next line, uh, declaring a variable b of the same type r, is using again the bracket notation, but this time with an iterated component association. So uh, instead of having uh, one, two to 100, which would be a, a, bit, long, a bit long and probably uh, uh, error prone as well, we can just say that uh, we want for all j in one to 100, uh, the value of j is seen as a big integer. And so here, since we're not talking about literal, uh, I have to call the right uh, conversion function. Uh, and just at the end, I'm putting a, a display of this array A. So just uh, outputting a tick image. Uh, so that, as I said, uh, this uh, attribute tick image is now implemented for all types by default. And here, uh, the default is to print it uh, this way uh, in, in uh, shaded gray. Uh, now, there are also evolutions of ADA that uh, are done inside NATS in the preparation for a future version of ADA, possibly. Uh, and uh, here, they will be available with the uh, GNAT-X uh, switch, so for GNAT extensions. Uh, one uh, which is interesting and quite simple is this fixed lower uh, bound for arrays. So you can now declare that, for example, R, uh, this array of big integers, starts always at index 1. And whenever you're passing uh, an R, even a slice, to uh, for example, a procedure or a function that expects a uh, parameter of this type R, there will be a slide. Uh, or if you're assigning or if you're converting to R, there will be a slide. So that's uh, the slice of your array is, uh, is reset to uh, start at index one. Uh, so that's quite convenient in particular uh, uh, for Spark, something that you would have, uh, for which you would have used before uh, a dynamic predicates. And uh, there wouldn't uh, have been this uh, automatic slide is now much uh, easier to, to do. Uh, something else which is interesting, this uh, generalized up, up notation. So uh, you can uh, uh, call operations with the dot notation on any primitive operation of a type. Uh, so you don't need the type to be tagged anymore. Uh, so the sometimes uh, bad practice of uh, adding uh, tagged records where uh, a simple record would be sufficient which was done for having this uh, object notation is not needed anymore. So you can see here with just type counter, which is an integer type, I can call a C dot increment on object C. Uh, we have other uh, bigger extensions of ADA on which we are still working, like pattern matching, like uh, simpler accessibility rules that don't depend on, on dynamic accessibility being checked for anonymous access types. So if you want to know more about that, uh, you can read this blog post, Going Beyond ADA, uh, which was uh, written, uh, I think, by uh, our colleague Arnold. Uh, some of these will, may not be available already in FSF 11, but if not, they will be available in FSF 12 version of that version. And in the future, if you're interested in the evolution of ADA and Spark, uh, we are uh, uh, putting a lot of effort to interact more with the community as we've done in the past years with this GitHub project. So uh, there's a project ma managed by Edacore uh, called Ada Spark RFCs, where uh, you are invited to contribute either issues or pull requests. Uh, so the, the readme of the GitHub explains the process. And now there's also the ARG, so the uh, national, international body governing the evolution of Ada, which uh, offers to its website and this GitHub project uh, for which I give the link, uh, the ability to interact with the ARG itself and, and propose evolutions for the ADA language. Now, talking about uh, Spark evolution. Uh, so we have seen evolutions also in the Spark language with language features that are supported by evolutions of the tool. So, so that's uh, using these features is uh, as uh, convenient as possible and is as automated as possible. Uh, so some of these will be available again in FSF 11 or soon in FSF 12 release of, uh, of Spark. Uh, so I wanted to emphasize just three of them. Uh, the extension of the pointer support with ownership, 
so here I invite you to uh, read the details in the sport users guide. So I, I give you the exact section here. Uh, the access types in EDAR are quite rich uh, between a general access type, uh, access to constants, anonymous access types, uh, and they have a, a special interpretation in Spark so that we can support various uses, use cases of pointers. In particular, when you are sharing pointers uh, with mutability, we enforce ownership, uh, like in the language Rust, so that uh, there's uh, no shared mutable reference uh, or no shared mutable reference and readable reference at the same time. The next one is the extension of the support for proof of termination. Uh, so now you can, like you could before, uh, specify a variant for loop to uh, specify how the loop progresses towards a, uh, a final uh, execution of the loop. You can do the same for subprograms, uh, which are recursive or mutually recursive using a subprogram variant. Uh, and you have a notation to specify that subprogram terminates uh, and other that uh, specify that uh, subprogram don't terminate uh, or not always terminate. And by termination here, I mean really uh, returning normally, not raising an exception, not aborting. And the last one is uh, for more complex proof of data initialization. So historically, the uh, proof of initialization of data before data is read has been uh, taken care of by what we call flow analysis, which is uh, a data flow analysis done modularly, but that doesn't include calling provers and uh, generating formulas for provers to prove. Uh, so that was uh, not as precise as what the proof could do, but that's more automatic. And now there's a possibility to go beyond what the flow analysis can do uh, in cases that require it. Uh, but of course, that requires more uh, specification using this aspect, relaxed initialization for the object and types that require it. And this attribute uh, uh, initialized, so attribute should be <laughs> In, oh, that's just the, the title of the, sec, of the section. So it's uh, the attribute initialized to specify when some data is uh, precisely initialized. Uh, and so data doesn't need to be fully initialized in that uh, uh, case. And there are proof involved to show that uh, every read of uh, data uh, reads some initialized data. So of course, we're not only evolving uh, the language, we're also evolving the tool. Uh, related to Spark, so that it's uh, more user-friendly, that it has uh, more automation, and uh, that interactions are richer. Uh, so in particular for automation, we have updated all the underlying provers uh, that ship with NatProve to the latest version of uh, AlterGo CVC5, which is the successor of CVC4, uh, Z3, and including a new prover of a different family. So instead of an SMT solver, now it's a constraint solver uh, called Colibri which is in particular interesting when you're using a nonlinear arithmetic uh, or a mix of various arithmetic like integers and the floating points so together. Um, there's also uh, improvements in the interactions with the user. So uh, that proof tries to display counterexamples when the proof fails by asking an, an underlying prover uh, a model, so an explanation of why the, uh, the formula would be false. And uh, so now we check automatically these counterexamples before displaying them so that we're uh, sure that uh, they uh, point to an actual problem, either in the code or in the specification. So you can see this uh, article that we published last year at uh, Formal ID if you want to uh, uh, have more understanding of what we did here. And finally, uh, we have an initial support for Spark in Visual Studio Code that you find on the uh, Visual Studio Code marketplace, but I'll talk about it in a moment. So now a few words about Libedolang. Uh, Libedolang is a library which uh, gives a syntactic and semantic analysis for EDA programs. So it's quite flexible and powerful, and it applies both to EDA and Spark. Uh, in the latest year, uh, what uh, we have done is improve support for EDA 22. Uh, so all the features that I mentioned before and generics. Uh, the support for the preprocessing that is available with NATS. Uh, and if you apply it to uh, bigger programs, a better memory footprint, better runtime, time, in particular thanks to a new logic solver, so to resolve uh, all the overloaded, overloaded symbols and the types of expressions. Uh, Lidlang is based on the framework that we also develop at EDACore called the LangKit, uh, which is uh, applied to EDAP uh, with Lidlang. And LangKit comes with its own query language, so LKQL for LangKit uh, query language. 
which is a declarative way to uh, uh, a query an AST. And so I put an example here. Uh, if you want in a, in a checker to flag declaration of general, generic formal objects of mode in out, uh, you do that in these two lines. Uh, node is generic formal object deck. And then inside, you want an F deck, which is an object deck. And in this object deck, you want the mode, the F mode here, field to be mode in out. So that, that's very compact, very readable uh, to uh, uh, very powerfully uh, query an decode base once it's been either syntactically or semantically analyzed. Uh, so in terms of uh, adoption for libedelang, and now it's used across the board in Educo products and in customer projects. Uh, so I just list a few, uh, there are more. So in coverage analysis, net coverage tool, in the coding standard checking, so the net check tool, in test analysis generation, so the tool GNAT test, and fuzzing, the new tool GNAT fuzz, uh, in the code peer static analyzer, which is based both on libedelang and the infer uh, tool for static analysis uh, developed at uh, Facebook. Uh, and in the Ada language server, which I'm going to talk about, uh, which is also based in Libidang and is used in IDEs, so integrated development environment. Uh, finally, uh, what uh, can be uh, interesting for you is that Libidang is integrated with a layer. So Fabien is going to talk about a layer in a moment, the package manager for Ada. Uh, and it has a number of APIs for various languages, so Ada, Python, C, and Okama. And uh, last uh, words on Visual Studio Code. So of course, many things that I'll talk about are already available in Nat Studio. So you can keep using Nat Studio, which is uh, the most developed environment for developing in, in Ada and Proving Spark. But another suitable option now is Visual Studio Code, uh, which is quite appealing to students usually because they already use it for different languages. So you can find it on the Visual, Code, Visual Studio Code Marketplace. Uh, so that's uh, this extension uh, from Edacore which has been installed uh, almost 15,000 times. Uh, so it supports programming in Ada. And in particular, it has extended refactorings based on what we call the, the language server protocol, uh, historically from Microsoft. Uh, and uh, here we have the Ada language server, so an implementation of this language server protocol for Ada, which is the new engine for completion navigation, all things related to IDE, uh, including code highlighting, both the syntactic and now the semantic code highlighting, uh, and many code refactoring. Uh, so the benefit of this Ada language server is that it's shared between all IDEs, so that uh, the uh, improvements that are done here are available in Gnat Studio, Individual Studio Code, and other IDEs, which uh, include this Ada language server. So I put the link uh, to the GitHub page if you want to know more. Uh, that's the same for, by the way, Libedelang and Lankit. Uh, they are all on GitHub, so you can uh, go look and interact with us uh, from there. So there are many code refactorings, and I just uh, list those that are uh, implemented right now, but we are working on more. So many things related to parameter, like adding, removing parameters, moving them, changing their mode, uh, and things related to programs and declarations, like extracting as a program from a context, uh, pull up a declaration in the enclosing scope, uh, suppressing a separate, so when uh, modernizing your code base, etc. Finally, you can uh, use Visual Studio Code for proving in Spark. Uh, so you can run fine grain analysis like you do inside the GNAT Studio and get back rich messages in the problems view of Visual Studio Code. Uh, and so for running the analysis, you have tasks uh, in the uh, uh, natural way in Visual Studio Code. So following flow analysis, so that's the what we call the examine entries, examine tasks, on the project, on the file, or on the subprogram. And for doing flow analysis and proof, so the complete thing, uh, that's the proof uh, tasks on the project, the file, the subprogram, or selected region, or a line. So that's all. And I'm uh, available for questions in the final Q&A. Uh, right now, I'm going to pass the mic to uh, Fabian.